Welcome, my name is Stuart Easton from Transparent Choice. This webinar was recorded on the 11th of December 2014 and it looks at the problems of prioritising large sets of products or projects through the eyes of the Federation of Industries of Minas Gerais, a region of Brazil. Our speakers are Marina Santos Urivio, she's an economist from the University of Gerais and holds an MBA. Um, she's also currently the planning manager at the Federation of Industries and uh, in the past she's been a lecturer and researcher at, uh, at university level. Another speaker is Tobias Albuquerque. He's the senior consultant at Macroplan. Macroplan is a strategic consulting company that supported uh, Federation as they made this uh, prioritization of over 1,700 different items. And uh, interestingly, he, he seems to have a, a feeling for this Federation of Industries thing because uh, he was the, the project management lead at the German Federation of Industries in Latin America. The final speaker is Roberto Camaro. Roberto is an old friend of Transparent Choice and has done other webinars with us in the past. He's one of Latin America's leading experts on uh, AHP and decision making, specifically around project prioritization. And he's done, uh, he teaches at university, at the University of Sao Paulo, uh, does research into decision making, and uh, he's also worked consulting with world-class companies such as Whirlpool, Petrobras, and Banco do Brasil. So without any further ado, let's get the webinar started. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Um, thanks a lot for the invitation to share our experience. And um, we really appreciate the way Transparent Choice works, the way you share knowledge. Uh, let me briefly um, point out the main topics of our webinar. Uh, as you said, Stuart, Marina will um, start talking a bit about Fiengi, how they work, uh, what they do. Then I will introduce you very briefly to Macroplan, a consulting firm that was hired by Fiengi in order to do their corporate strategy. After that, I will give a brief overview about the problem that we faced. Um, then Roberto, who is our specialist in HP, he will take over and he will talk about the overall process of portfolio alignment, like how we applied HP, uh, what worked well, and especially what didn't work that well, what were the main lessons learned. And he will finish talking about the main results, like how the decisions that were made, how they were incorporated into corporate and departmental goal, um, goals and action plans. And then I'll finish with the business impacts of implementing such a structured method in order to prioritize a portfolio of products, products and services. So that's it, and I'll pass the word to Marina. Okay, Tobias, thank you. Hello, everybody. Let me say first hello to everyone who is hearing us and present myself. As Stuart said, I'm Marina Uriville. I'm the planning manager of System Fiengi. Sistema Fiengi is a private institution that has the mission to support the industries all over the state of Minas Gerais. We have 8,300 employees and approximated 1.2 million reais of annual revenue. There are 80,000 affiliate industries on five subsidiaries and 12 regional offices. Uh, we are uh, 196 business units distributed across the state of Minas Gerais, working for industrial development, advocacy, professional education, business management, and quality of life for industrial workers. About Macroplan, uh, Tobias will give you more information. Okay, many thanks. Um, as you as you see, Minas, the state of Minas Gerais is, is a huge territory. It's a bit bigger than France. So um, that, that, that gives you a dimension of the, um, of the Federation of Industries of, of Minas, Fiengi. Uh, Macroplan, uh, it was founded some 20, 25 years ago. Uh, it's one of Brazil's leading strategic consulting firms with offices in Rio, Brasilia, the capital, and Sao Paulo. 
we basically work on uh, scenario planning, strategy, and management by results. And uh, over the last two decades, we have been implementing over 250 projects with leading businesses, governments, and also non-governmental um, organizations. Currently, we work with uh, 40 consultants and approximately 20 associated experts. Roberto Camaño is one of those experts, so every time we have a very challenging and complicated issue about um, decision-making, uh, we call Roberto to help us out. Um, well, we, um, we are highly committed to deliver um, sustainable, to deliver true results to our clients based on strategic decisions and practical actions. And perhaps one of the best ways to, to prove this is that approximately 70 to 75 percent of our clients, they call us more than once. So that's Macroplan, um, the company that, the consulting company that Fiengi hired um, in January 2014 to develop its corporate strategy. So now again, Marina, about the strategic planning process. Okay, so about the project. We started 10 months ago the strategic planning of Sistema Fiengi with support of Macroplan. Uh, this project involved uh, initial phase. Uh, there were interviews and analysis. We also heard the strategic guidelines of the board for the strategy formulation when the guidelines, customers, and stakeholders were defined. This project also included the business portfolio review that is the focus of this presentation. Uh, the development of goal agreements and the monitoring process, that's the phase that we are now. Uh, in summary, the objects of the strategic planning were uh, development, develop a corporate strategy defining their orga organization vision, uh, key areas of focus, objectives, and portfolio of products and services. Uh, we also uh, align a department and individual goals with corporate strategy by taking the planning down to the implementation level by setting goal agreements as we are presenting after. And uh, design a performance, a performance management system which monitors overall department and organization goals. Uh, for the phase of the portfolio review, we use the H8P method that Tobias and Camanho will give us more uh, details of this process. Okay, thank you. So as Marina said, uh, we will um, talk in more detail about the portfolio alignment, the portfolio review. Um, when we started this um, phase of the project, we initially identified um, an inefficient use of SCAR's resources due to a lack of corporate strategy on the one hand, but also, and most importantly, to an extensive, to a very extensive portfolio of more than um, 1,700 distinct products and services. Um, we also identified a missing integration and alignment not only between the subsidiaries but also within those subsidiaries, within the departments, causing a certain lack of synergies that could be, um, could be better handled. And um, aligned to that, uh, the, the whole goal-setting process was kind of fragile. Um, there was no formal agreement between management and employees as to the objectives that, um, that, that, that had, to be, um, had to be met. So there was a low employee motivation in a way. In resume, um, we faced the challenge to increase Fiengi's relevance and also its client recognition. And without any doubt, the portfolio alignment, it was a very crucial, very important step in order to reposition Fiengi and to better serve the client's demand. So... That, that, that about the importance of the portfolio review. Marina has an additional comment also. Uh, there is a, a recent research that uh, proves that our client uh, don't, uh, doesn't recognize us. The, the numbers were, were not good. 
Perfect. And that's in part due to this um, to this uh, extensive portfolio and and this lack of focus. So um, saying this, I would like to pass over to Camaño, Roberto Camaño, our specialist in AHP and complex decision making. He will take you over and talk about the details about the whole portfolio alignment uh, process. Thank you, Tobias. My pleasure to be with all of uh, you. Thank you, Stuart, for the one more invitation for us to talk together and present our knowledge about uh, this, this project. Well, um, we started with defining the criteria to select the, uh, the portfolio. And as you see, the products that we had was 1,733 products and services that was grouped in six, six key areas and 138 lines of business. And it was very important to, to make these groups because to evaluate 1,733 products is quite impossible to have good quality. One thing that's important to, to, to talking about AHP is that the methodolo methodology is, is more than uh, put uh, criteria and putting in alignment the, the projects with this criteria. We use uh, the AHP for more than 15 years and all of the projects that we par participate, the clients recognize that the tool is, or the methodology is very important to align the conversations. It means normally the literature do not talk about the alignment of the people, but it's very important to use AHP to do the alignment of the, the, the persons, the decision makers, and also to, to get a good result of the conversations of these people. In this direction, the second step that you see in, in the screen is the meeting with the main, uh, main executives of uh, Federation of Industry of Minas Gerais and discussing uh, the objectives and the evaluation of criteria. We selected the top manager, was around seven top managers, that uh, evaluate the criteria that we will show you in the next uh, the next slide. Uh, the criteria that we used, but to, it was very interesting because they didn't use the methodology before, and they recognized that they get a, a good result with the conversation use the methodology. After that, we, we did it two sections, as you see. The first section was with a group of uh, managers. And if you look uh, down in the slide, you see the two groups of persons on the right side and the left side in different tables. And this was very interesting because in the right side, we had uh, the managers of uh, System of Yengis, and in the left side, we have the, the managers uh, that are in the operation, and they help the, the top managers to, to not anchoring their thoughts. It was the first time that I thought to use this, and I recommend to use this, it means you have two groups in the left side, the top managers, in the right side, the people that really understood what is happening in the market directly with the client. It was very interesting to evaluate the project and the products in this case. We did two sections of AHP with different groups, and uh, it was very important because my tip is if you evaluate more than 15 products or projects after the quality of the evaluation drop down very quickly. It means my tip is to evaluate maximum 20 projects or products in this case in only one day. After that, 
uh, macro plan with the top managers, define the goal agreement that uh, Tobias will talk about later, and to setting the goals in the KPIs and targets for 2050. Uh, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, now, now that we've reconnected Brazil, uh, yes. I'm delighted to have Brazil back. <laughs> um, uh, we, we can uh, we can carry on. So, R Roberto, do you want yeah. to carry on? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm talking about the Go Agreement that was signed with the group. After that, we evaluate uh, all the projects or the products. Uh, against the criteria that I will show you in comment in the next this slide. This slide is very important because this oriented uh, each evaluation of each product, or each line of product. It means we present for everybody the slide with the line of business that we are doing the judgment, the detailed description of the, the product, the main clients of the product, the market penetration, it means how many people are, are uh, receiving that product or buying that product. If you see in this case, in they have 29,635 people in the course, in this kind of course, and we explain the alignment with corporate strategy goals Fox area and value proposition. It means it's very important when you do the evaluation of the product or the project, in this case the product, that you put the information for, for to help the person uh, understand uh, the value and the, the or the kind of contribution this product will give for the criteria that we have. It means. We worked with two screens in the meeting. In one screen, we show this explanation. In the other screen, we ask for the people to evaluate the product against the criteria that you show in the next slide. Uh, Stuart, uh, the slides with the criteria? Yep, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Well, we have three major, in the first line, three major criteria. Strategic relevance of the product, the contribution for the image of the Federation of Industry, and the financial sustainability of the product for the Federation of Industry. In the strategic relevance, we had two sub-criteria. Contribution to the overall corporate goals, market penetration, and quality and added value of the product. It means the, the decision makers evaluate each product against these three sub-criteria, contribution, market penetration, quality and added value, image, and financial sustainability. It was very important because make clear to them the kind of contribution their products give for this kind of criteria. Uh, before, they didn't have one idea of the group of the products, how was the performance of their products against this kind of criteria. And after that, we evaluate the, the products give uh, a, a systematic view of the products and their performance. One thing that's important to, to remember is the weight of the criteria was given by the top managers of the Federation of Industry. It means you can use AHP to evaluate the weight of the criteria made by uh, the top decision makers, and after these weights and these criteria, you use to to 
the, peop the people will use to evaluate the products against this criteria. It means you translate the vision of the top managers for the rest of the organization very clearly using AHP. In the next slide, we're going to see that uh, the performance of the product against the criteria, as I told you before, with a code of colors, we define uh, the values. It means we, we put from 0 to 30% yellow, uh, excuse me, red, from 30% of performance in each criteria to 60% yellow, and over 60% green. It means we have in a code, as you see in the slides, in the right side of this slide, main results, we had the condition to evaluate the performance by criteria of the group of products. And that was very important because analyzing uh, in a systematic way the results, it was possible to uh, reduce around 25% the products in, of FIENG, putting their efforts and their uh, resources in the products that you give better results for the, the vision of the top managers. It was very interesting because the conversation was clear and the rules was transparent to make this decision. It means using AHP, it's very clear for, for the rest of the organization, the decision you are making and the communication of this decision. That's very important uh, because it will make easier the governance of the whole company. Well, now I will pass uh, to Tobias that will explain the goal agreements that uh, they make with their top managers to implement this decision. Thank you. Okay. Thank you a lot, Roberto. Thank well, you. Um, very simple. The goal agreements. Um, we we try to um, uh, to put on one page uh, the strategic objectives, the KPIs, and the targets for 2015, for next year, for every subsidiary of the Fiengi system. So we have the um, basically the, the subsidiary and the strategic focus on top of the goal agreement. Then we have the objectives of each subsidiary, the KPIs and the targets for 2015. And then we come to the heart of the whole, of the whole thing, that is the, the revised portfolio of products and services with um, management measures, very detailed measures for each line of business. So for each of those 138 lines of business, we um, defined in the second HP meeting that Roberto just presented, we, we defined a set of uh, management measures. And um, this was, was all discussed between the top management and president of the uh, FIENGI system, and they signed this goal agreement at their annual meeting with the participation of more or less 1,500 um, line managers and employees, so that that had a, had a very important symbolic um, important symbolic effect also. So, passing the slide, Stuart, and coming to the business impacts of of the, of the revision of the portfolio. Well, first of all, engaging management and employees in defining objectives and determining those products and services that had to be delivered with a priority. That was a very important step for, um, for the goal-setting process. Um, secondly, uh, since we cut more or less 30% of the lines of business, so we reduced actually the portfolio by more or less 30% of lines of business that we all reduced or even stopped, uh, we, we were able, the system was able to focus much better the SCAS resources on a much more focused portfolio, so we had a more effective resource allocation at the end of the day. Um, a third point, um, better coordination and integration. As we organized the meeting, not 
following the, the, the hierarchy and the organizational structure, but following the, the, the big focus areas, um, we, we got um, some discussions going on between the, uh, the subsidiaries that, in, as a result, um, led to a much better uh, integration and inclusive uh, and to better synergies and to a reduction of um, redundancies that we uh, encountered when we started the whole process. And last but not least, uh, increased satisfaction, increased sense of belonging. All this led to a much better motivation of the employees, and I'm pretty sure that this is a key driving force for the FIENGI system to deliver more and better results in the future. So with that, um, I'd like to pass the word to Stuart, who will um, um, say some final words and, and our webinars. So thank you a lot. Thanks, Marina. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. Um, it was a pleasure to participate in, that, in this, this project. Thank you very much. Yes, very good. Th thank you, everybody. Um, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to come along and present, and I thank all the, the listeners for, for joining us. Um, I, I have a few sort of thoughts and, and questions, if you, if you like, uh, that some of the things that jumped out at, at me uh, while I was listening are um, uh, things like, you know, it, it, it came at the beginning and it came at the end was this, this theme of, in a large organization, you, you get lots of, um, uh, uh, lots of non-alignment between different parts of the organization where they're all pushing in different directions. Um, and one of the things that's come across to me really clearly is that you can't fix that until you have some idea at the corporate level of what your goals and priorities are. Um, can you say something about, about um, what the senior executives felt about that after the process, you know, whether, how, what, you know, what, what they got from it, and what, what people at a more operational level got from the fact that they now have, have alignment? And uh, d does that make sense? Stuart. Um... Yes. I think it's, it's important to say that the first time that we 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 do this process in this company, uh, I think we created a, a space for some conversations, for some discussions that were never done before. So uh, there is a, 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 there is one result that's important for this process. And second, um, we have, before this work, we have uh, some workshops to to discuss the strategic strategic guidelines for the whole company, né, for Sistema Fieng, that were the basis for these discussions of the the portfolio. Uh, so I think it was uh, a little more easy to to converge to 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 union né, this this uh, this 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 different points of view and uh, the method AHP uh, method um, helped us a lot in this uh, in creating these spaces of conversation with. Uh, objective criteria with uh, a, a dynamic process and with the the holes of the the conversations that were defined the rules were defined in all this process i think it's what it was a a, a gain too Great. Yes, I, thank, I agree thank you. very much with Marina and Roberto, and it's just a, a very small co comment, final comment. It's not by chance that the strategic relevance or the alignment with the corporate strategy had 73% of the of the weight, and uh, image and financial sustainability had around 30%. So the, 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 the discussion Roberto mentioned with the top management, the first discussion in order to align the, the overall objectives of applying HP, and in order to define the criteria, it was already um, in that sense. We need more alignment, so we will give strategic relevance a more important uh, weight. 
Great. Great. Thank you for that. Um, it, th that ties in really nicely. That, that was really clear. Uh, it ties in really nicely with one of the things that we see all the time, uh, which is that you know, m in many organizations, um, prioritization is done by the executive team with very little structure. And so the executives end up doing battle. It becomes very political. And, and one of the reasons is that the executives all have their goals handed out before they go into that meeting and their goals aren't aligned so they're all trying to push for projects that will help them achieve their uh, their performance targets now it sounds like um, uh, here at uh, VMG is that how you pronounce it in Brazil um, it, it, it sounds like what you did was you turned that on its head uh, and it sounds like that worked really well, where, where you defined the priorities first and then mm -hmm. worked out what the portfolio was to support those priorities and then worked out what the metrics were that would, that would define success. Um, it, it, can you say something about how that was received by, by the, the operational managers um, who, who were being measured, if you like, uh, based on the outcome of the, uh, this, this process? Yes, I think the employees on the operational level they received it um, they received it very well because the 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 situation before was that there was no formal uh, agreement between management and employees as to the targets and the objectives that had to be achieved. So um, and and uh, most importantly, since uh, uh, the process was done with a lot of transparency and as you said, Stuart, it, it, it was exactly the way you, you said. First, we set the priorities, and that was done in, in, in a lot of meetings, actually, uh, involving not only top management, but also the line managers. Then we defined, based on that, the portfolio, and only then the metrics. There, I think what was key to, to, to guarantee the um, acceptance of, of the employees. And I might be mistaken, but Marina might, might also want to comment, but, but I think the, 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 the line managers, the employees, they received it very well, and that they, they uh, we didn't say that, but they had their goal agreement as well. So the top managers firmed a goal agreement with the president, and the, the managers they also signed a goal agreement with the top managers. And the process itself was very um, 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 transparent, and I, I didn't notice any any major problem with that. Yes, and uh, aligned to that, we we were we are working in a communication plan to 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 uh, to to inform people uh, of the organization about this uh, the strategic guidelines, about these decisions, about this this metrics, and about these goals. Uh, so it's a it, uh, there is a communication plan that is supporting this strategy to to communicate with the the employees. Great, that's that's fantastic. And and one of the things that we often see when people adopt this kind of methodology is that then people from different departments actually have a common language that they can talk to each other with. Uh, and the common language is, is kind of what we're looking at right now. It's, it's the criteria and it's, it's the corporate priorities. Um, and, and I suspect that's part of um, why you saw that reduction in redundancies and, and you saw more synergies coming out. So that, that was really fantastic. Um, just one more thing before we leave the employees. Um, uh, anybody that's interested, there, there has actually been some work done at Stanford University where they look at um, the confidence that the team responsible for executing a decision, the confidence that they have in the decision has a very, very significant impact on how hard they work, how hard they try, and how well they execute an initiative. So this kind of transparency and the fact that, that you guys put in place a communications plan for the people executing the plan is really fantastic. I, I commend you. I, I, I applaud you for having followed it through right down to, to that level. It really is a, a great example of how 
to, to manage a, a major uh, prioritization and, and a ma major strategy alignment initiative. So, so I applaud you. Uh, again, I, I thank you uh, for your time preparing for this talk and coming along and, and sharing it with, uh, with everybody on the call today. Um, and uh, to all the people who turned up and stayed with us throughout, um, thank you very much for, for joining us again. Um, I apologize for, it looks like some of you were having problems get uh, Before we finish, I have one last thing. Um, as is traditional, those of you who have been to some of our webinars before, um, you know that we, uh, we typically send out uh, two or three um, little freebies afterwards. Uh, and we try and make them relevant to, to the talk that we've just heard. Um, so we're going to be sending out uh, some uh, by, by email over the next few days um, a, a recording of this webinar. As soon as we've, we've got it off the servers and cleaned it up, we'll send that out. Um, but we'll also be sending you um, a document about uh, planning and budgeting. Uh, it, it has the really nice title of Budgeting Doesn't Have to Suck. Uh, but it's all about it's all about this process of starting with the core values of the business, starting with the priorities of the business, and, and how that can transform the whole budgeting and planning process. Um, so we're going to send that, and I think it'll mirror a lot of the themes that we've heard today. Um, we're also going to send a, a case study uh, about, um, uh, about a Danish utility company. It's, it's actually a company called EnergyNet. Uh, they run the Danish uh, national power grid. Uh, and gas distribution pipelines. Uh, if they get it wrong, the, the lights literally go out in Denmark. Um, and they went through a very similar process to this, um, not with uh, 1,700 um, uh, projects, but it was still a significant portfolio that they were managing. Um, so we'll, we'll send you that case study that you can read and, and look for commonalities between that one and this webinar. And then finally, we're going to send out um, uh, one of the, our favorite downloads. Uh, it, this is one of our most popular downloads. We're going to send out a list of sample criteria that people use when they're prioritizing projects. Uh, one of the questions we get asked again and again and again is, what criteria should I use to prioritize projects? We're looking at the, the list that, uh, that these guys used. This worked for them. And it worked for them at this point in time as to just said um, they were they were going through a, a period of change, and I think Marina said you know, this was the first time they did it, and they wanted to put a focus on strategic relevance um, for this first go round. Um, but these these criteria evolved, so we're going to send you a list of about 80, 85 uh, different criteria that are commonly used to prioritize projects, really to help you just start thinking about which ones are relevant for you. So that's it from us. Uh, thank you again for joining. Thank you for the presenting team. I, I really enjoyed it. I got a lot out of that today, and I'm sure the, the, the audience did as well. So uh, thank you all for coming.